What's good YouTube? It's your boy Leo coming to you guys with yet another video. So, I wanted to come on here and talk about a certain wrestler and pretty much get my feedback on this wrestler and as far as um, it's been always been in the conversation in the wrestling world about this uh, certain wrestler that being none other than the main event, Jey Uso um, himself. Um, this guy has all the potential in the world. I think a lot of people can agree he has all the potential to be a singles champion that is his quest that is his story trying to um win that singles championship regardless if it's the u.s intercontinental or the world titles respectively and i wanted to come on here and um it's been the talk that people are getting upset that it feels like he um is not going to win that um and I wanted to kind of shed some light on this situation to kind of help everybody out. I think this is something that I think needs to be um, discussed and needs to be put out there. And the thing with Jey Uso, right? He is a great wrestler. We're not going to ignore the popularity that he receives weekly. We understand, I think as a fan, he gets some of the biggest reactions of the night when he is present in the building. We've seen you know, his rise to where he is now, and I feel like at the same time, we're also seeing this new baby face, with him being a baby face, they have gave him the, the, the stature of being this underdog type of character, and if you don't believe me, look at his, his current run that he's on now, where it looks like every time he gets close to becoming a singles champion, he is screwed out of the title, look and we're going to go through some of the moments where he has been close to capturing a singles title. And then we'll also talk about later in the video what's next and how do we think he could potentially get to that, that point where he could be a singles champion. So we're going to get into it. If you look at the different moments, right? The first time he got a crack at the singles championship back in 2020 when the pandemic was happening and we had him versus Roman Reigns that honestly if we're standing here that is Roman Reigns one of his best feuds overall as his tribal chief character because the investment that it was and the fact that it was family ties being involved which allowed Jey Uso to kind of uh, you be used at this breast of fresh air in the WWE and him kind of starting to take the steps that he wanted to make to really put him out there as main event Jay Uso when he's kind of went when it cut with it because of Jimmy Uso's injury and you look at it like this and Jay Uso said in the promo it was a blessing in disguise and it was because if, if Jimmy Uso never got injured who was to say that we would ever have gotten this version or ever got Jay Uso being a singles competitor if it wasn't for that injury? And I'm not one to wish down on, on somebody's downfall or wish bad on anything or anything like that. But when you look at it from a story perspective, right, his injury was a blessing in disguise because it allowed Jay Uso to get to the point to where he is now. If he didn't get injured, who was, like I said, who was to say that Jay Uso would have ever reached a point in his career like that and now it's because of that he has run this wave of momentum all this time to where he was in the bloodline people wanted to see the moment he had he he had enough and he leaves and he did that in early 2023 when we were starting to see the seeds being planted of him leaving the bloodline right after the royal rumble where Sami Zayn turned on roman reigns and everybody was attacking attacking Sammy, but Jey Uso was reluctant to do anything. He just stood outside the ring. He was just watching on, and he walked out of the ring. We didn't see him for a couple of weeks, and then he comes back at the, I think, Elimination Chamber or something like that, and he got super kicked by um Sammy, or Hulu, I think it was a Hulu kick or a super kick, one of those, but then it allowed Roman Reigns to retain, and then we're seeing the story between um Sammy and Jey, but if you look at the Royal, like, going back into the Bloodline stuff, Everybody was somewhat okay with Jay, but we saw the story of where Jay started to come around to Sammy and started embracing Sammy to the point they were friends. And, and now, now if you look a couple weeks ago, they're still friends because of everything that they went through. They can relate to each other because of what they went through in the bloodline. We see Roman Reigns doing his thing. He's trying to become this new babyface character. We can see a character with Roman possibly going after people that he has wronged in the past trying to ask for forgiveness Roman Reigns is going to want to approach Sami Zayn Jey Uso just to name a few and you could 
have that story of where he can choose to forgive or choose to not forgive Roman based on the history that they have had and the history that they have between the two inside the bloodline and just as in a match capacity as well. So we're going to see that at some point. But back to my, um, sorry I got sidetracked, but back to the main points. If you look at his history of championship matches, we've seen his first after him losing to Roman Reigns, I believe in early 2023. This was later in the year. So I kind of got these out of order, these two matches. But early in the year, um, Paul Heyman and, and Jey Uso were in the ring. And Paul Heyman was embracing Jey Uso and saying, you're the next one up after Roman. And we're going to put you on a different level now. And he allowed him to challenge for the U.S. Championship against Austin Theory, who was the champion at that time. And then when you look at it, this if you're looking at his current like state right now, right, and you look back at it, yes, the story was going on, but I think that would have been the prime opportunity to pull the trigger on him versus Austin Theory and having him win the U.S. Championship. But if you look at what they did with Austin Theory, even though it didn't really work out for him in the in the long haul, him facing John Cena was the move that they wanted to make that year. So it didn't make sense to put the title on Jey Uso then. Because, and here's another thing that I want to put out before we continue with the video. The thing with Jey Uso, right? He's a great talent, right? He's great in the ring. He's solid in the ring, I would say. He's great on promos. He can garner a huge reaction. His merch sells like crazy. Yes, the, the, the WWE is going to see that and look at that. And they are going to reward that. It's just going to be a matter of when. The thing with Jey Uso right now, it is bad timing. He's always in these positions where people want him to win, myself included. But we all have to understand it is bad timing. It's just the wrong place, wrong time type of situation for him. And it sucks. But it's not to say that he won't get his moment. It just probably won't be right now. He can honestly win a single championship in a couple of months. Probably after this bloodline stuff. Because we know that is the direction they're going to take Jey Uso in. So you have to look at it from that perspective. But back to his moments where he's came up successful he came up successful unsuccessful with Austin Theory because of why Jimmy Uso Jimmy Uso got involved because there was interference on the um on Austin Theory's part with Pretty Deadly Jimmy Uso came out there to try to make the save but ultimately allowed Austin Theory to pick up the scraps and pin Jay Uso to retain the U.S. Championship so that was his first you know unsuccessful and triumph of trying to win the uh, a singles title then we go into the summer he pinned Roman Reigns which was a big which was a big deal nonetheless but then he faced Roman Reigns in a kind of not really memorable match that people want to go back and look at and then you had Jimmy Uso cost him the WWE undisputed championship so then you kind of split them up for a little bit then Jey Uso has wins the tag titles with Cody Rhodes. Then what happened? Jimmy Uso cost them the tag titles. And then they had their match at WrestleMania. And then, well, before WrestleMania, he faced Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship, which I think a lot of people wanted to see, were clamoring to see him potentially win that title from Gunther. And at, at the time we recorded the video, there were plans to do that, but they they chose not to pull the trigger at that point. So, you have that, right? I think when you look at Gunther, right? Excuse me. But, with his reign, there were only few, a few names that were going to do it. And Jey Uso, don't get me wrong, was at the top of the list. But I think there were other competitors that I feel like the WWE wanted to go with outside of Jey Uso. We saw Sami Zayn probably start to get in the mix. We saw Chad Gable. We saw both of those guys who people wanted to see, or at least for, for Chad Gable for the most part, they wanted to see him finish his story and take the title from Gunther after everything that Chad Gable had to go through in his feud with Gunther up until that point. So, the thing is, Jey Uso was kind of going to have his hands tied regardless if you put the title on him or not. So, Jey Uso, if he would have won, he would have probably had to defend it against Jimmy Uso. And we knew who was going to win that match. Regardless of how you put it, I think a lot of people were going to say Jey Uso was going to win. But I just feel like the U.S. 
him having holding the Intercontinental Championship would have made it even more predictable. And I think the WWE was trying to make it unpredictable in a sense of we don't know who could win. We can have the popular Jey Uso win, but, but they could pull a swerve and have Jimmy Uso be the one to win. So there were different stories that there were at least different outcomes that they were trying to potentially set up as an outcome for the match that they had, even though that match was not good by any means. Like that match was not it. But um and, and it, it just felt like it was just a super kick probably they just kept you know using super kicks on each other i wish they would have gave them like a different stipula like a stipulation maybe that would have helped the match a little bit i'm not too sure on that but still they could have done something to kind of help elevate the match because i think it was a lot of history and a lot of weight to the story it just the match didn't really meet a lot of people's expectations like they wanted it to so you have that but then you have and this is in we're still in 2024 we're in 2024 at this point he's came up is unsuccessful for the u.s championship he came up unsuccessful for the WWE championship and the intercontinental championship those are three opportunities he has came up short against then we're looking post wrestlemania he gets uh, he starts to go after the world championship, who was Damian Priest at the time. He got into a feud, but the thing is, like I said, bad timing. The reason why? Because they weren't going to have Damian Priest lose that title almost instantly. It's over as Jey Uso was, and I think when you look at Backlash, that crowd was pro Jey Uso. They wanted to see him get his moment. They wanted to see him become world heavyweight champion, but that was not the case. Like, Bad timing. They weren't going to pull the trigger on that just then. And plus, you had the Judgment Day get involved, which allowed, even though Jey Uso lost, it allowed him to still look strong in defeat because he didn't lose, you know, clean. A lot of his matches, they're protecting him in a way because if you think about it, if he wasn't being protected, he would be just getting beat by these guys clean. If you look at all his title matches that he's had up in this point, he has been, yes, he has lost, but they have also allowed him to look strong in defeat at the same time because in every title match that he's had at that up until this point, there has also always been outside interference with, like I said, with the U.S. title, it was Jey Uso. When it was Roman Reigns, it was Jay, uh, Jimmy Uso. I, I don't know why I said Jimmy Uso for the, uh, the other one, but Jimmy Uso for both of these matches and plus Solo Sokoa. And then with with um the Intercontinental Championship, it was Jimmy Uso one, once again, to set up their match for WrestleMania. Now he's getting screwed over by the Judgment Day at Backlash. Then we we start to pivot because we're starting to head towards Money in the Bank. A lot of people, including myself, I will admit, wanted to see him win that Money in the Bank briefcase. And I feel like it. If you honestly, the way I see it, I think it could. I'm. It, I feel like it was a missed opportunity because, granted. J um, Drew McIntyre and CM Punk have the, a great story. Like, they're one of the best stories in wrestling right now. Not even in just WWE. One of the best stories in wrestling. But at the same time, we didn't necessarily need to waste the money in the bank briefcase to help elevate that story when it was already going to elevate itself on its own. They didn't necessarily need to win the... They didn't need to put the briefcase on Drew. They could have went with Jey Uso, but that's neither here or there. I'm not going to hear the rant about that. But... Again, he did, I mean, and it wasn't like he just lost or got pinned anything. It was a, it was a no DQ type of match. So anything can happen. Drew just was the smarter man that night. And he, he um, capitalized on the moment and then threw a ladder at Jey Uso, neutralizing him, allowing Drew, Drew McIntyre to hit the Claymore to eliminate that threat of Jey Uso potentially getting his, getting his moment again. And knowing Drew McIntyre's history with the bloodline, it kind of made sense in a, at the same time because Drew always wanted his revenge on Jey Uso. And then with him doing that, not only he got rid of that threat, but he, he screwed over the fans that wanted to see that um, Jey Uso went up winning Money in the Bank, allowing more sympathy for Jey Uso, for more people to clamor for him to, to win a championship. And it allowed to get more heat on Drew McIntyre, especially with his feud that he has now with CM Punk. So you have that. But then he starts to he now he now with him going after the um Intercontinental Championship again now with um Braun Breaker. I think Braun Breaker even said, you know, none of your family members have beat my family members and you're not gonna be the one to do it. I think they're building a story, and I don't know when this match is going to happen at the time of recording the video. Maybe they, they do decide to do this at Bad Blood, but 
at the same time, we can all agree that it's not going to, Jey Uso is not going to win um, the Intercontinental Championship. They just put the title on Braun Breaker, and I feel like they're going to want to give him a lengthy reign with that title to give him enough time to do something really important with that title and help elevate his stock as well and also in, uh, elevate the Intercontinental Championship as well. So you have that, right? But the thing, like I said, the thing is, Jey Uso will get his moment, but the thing right now, it is bad timing for Jey Uso. It, he's in these situations where people want him to win, but it's just not going to happen. Now, I'm not this, now I'm, I'm going to say this. Jey Uso will get his moment. Trust me. If you if you guys don't agree, then I don't I don't know. Like um but he is going to get his moment. He is going to become a singles champion. Now, do I know what singles champion that is? I don't know. Maybe it is the Intercontinental Championship. Maybe they decide to put the World Championship on him at some point. But for being honest, the only way he is the only the only time we can really say that he's going to win a World ch or any type of singles title, it would probably be after the Bloodline stuff because we know they're going to put him in that storyline at some point uh, in the next couple of weeks or so because you know Survivor Series is in November and if they're doing War Games, they're going to want Jey Uso to be a part of that. So. In a sense, he is going to have his his hands tied pretty much for the rest of the year. So he's not going to have an opportunity to get his hands on some singles gold. So, in a sense, this, this match that he's about to have with Braun Breaker is probably going to be his last opportunity to win a singles championship for a while. Because he's going to be involved in this bloodline stuff at least into like... Um, Royal Rumble season, which is in February. Now, I did make a prediction or just a outside prediction. What if they do... Um, pivot back to doing um, Jey Uso versus Gunther, and they have Jey Uso win the World Rumble. That will be a huge moment for him because then the story does make sense. Jey Uso can come out there and says, "The only reason why you you beat me so many times is because you always had to have help. There was always some type of interference." We he, Jey Uso can be like, "If it was one on one, I would have beaten you." You can build this story of. Jey Uso being this baby face and this underdog going up against someone like a, a, a stature of a Gunther. You can build that. You can get people invested in that. So it's not to say that they can't pull the trigger in a couple of months. And, and another thing, and I think people made a great comparison. This is similar to what LA Knight was doing. It took them a while before they put a title on him. People wanted to see them put a championship on him. Like, look at the times that he's had came up unsuccessfully. He wasn't part of the, the U.S. championship stuff last year. Then, um, he wasn't on WrestleMania last year. And then, he got into it, um, with, um, he got into the Money in the Bank last year. People, he was the heavy favorite. People wanted him to win. And they gave it to Damian Priest. And then, it seemed like, for the most part, they weren't really doing anything with LA Knight. He he won that battle royal at SummerSlam, and then he went on to face Roman Reigns. He lost for that championship. Then he got into it for the Fatal Four Way. He he didn't win that. Then we, he went on to WrestleMania to have a match with AJ. He won that, and then went on this a couple uh, recently to win the U.S. Championship. So if you look at his time, it took them a year almost. A year plus, kinda, to get them to where they wanted LNA to be as far as being a single champion. So it's going to take some time before they do pull that tr the trigger on having Jey Uso win some singles gold. But like I'm telling you, it's going to happen. You can have him win the Royal Rumble, like I said. You could have him potentially be in the mix for the Intercontinental Championship again if he's on um SmackDown and a heel ends up winning the U.S. Championship, they, they can have Jey Uso go after the U.S. title. So there is still time that they can p pull the trigger. And I've seen some of the stuff that's, that his um, Rikishi has been saying, and they, he's telling me you should go to AEW. They're not doing you right. It's it's a, you got to understand, Triple H is not going to pull a, like a shocking factor just to pull it. He wants people to be invested. He wants to take people on this long ride to the, ultimate payoff that's what we're doing with Jey Uso we've seen it with Liv Morgan before she won the championship that we're taking her on a ride and she's still on that ride because I think at some point she's going to lose but maybe win the Royal Rumble but that that's neither here or there but still it's going to happen you guys just be patient it's going to happen it's going to take some time of course but it will happen and when it does it's going to feel the moment it's going to be way more sweeter than you could have ever imagined but comment down below let me know 
Do you guys feel that Jey Uso is the victim of bad timing? Do you guys still have faith in Jey Uso as far as winning a singles title or have you gave up on that altogether? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to get your thoughts and your, and your opinions. Road to 300 subscribers, but the ultimate goal is 10K. Like I say in every video, when I do hit 10K, I will do a giveaway with one of my lucky subscribers will win a WWE Championship from WWE Shop. So if you want to be a part of that and be that potential lucky subscriber to win that championship, subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. You can always change your mind in the future, but why would you want to do that? I'm trying to give you guys daily. Wrestling constant grind never stops. Um, But I appreciate everybody who has been showing love to my channel. Every single one of you, I appreciate every single one of you. I can't do this without you guys. You guys make it possible. But super kick that like button so you're uh, so my channel helps my channel get pushed across the platform so more people can see what I'm doing over on YouTube. Superman punch the post notification bell so another time posting a video, where it's a reaction video, rant video, live stream, thoughts and opinions video, any type of video. You could be in the loop of things when I do drop a video and spear that subscribe button. It takes three seconds out of your day to do those three things for me. Helps in the progression of my channel uh, over time. Um, but with that being said, everybody has a great day, a great week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.